My name is Aram Vartan. I'm the Dungeon Master for God's Fall, a custom 5th edition Dungeon and Dragons campaign in Washington, D.C. In this podcast, we'll meet the first of our players, a halfling rogue from the city of Port Bliss. Doro Not. Doro was raised by well-meaning parents who moved to Port Bliss with dreams of striking it rich in the wealthy port city. Like many, those dreams ended in poverty and drug abuse, and Doro quickly realized he was on his own. Finding his way into a group of fellow halfling castoffs, Doro was taught how to steal and lie for a living. He proved a natural at it and decided to dedicate his life to becoming the best thief who had ever lived. In pursuit of that goal, Doro learned about a deal going down in the West Slums that involved a small wooden box and a stunningly large amount of gold. Hello, my name is Doug Horn. I've been playing Dungeons and Dragons for four years. I'm playing Doro Not the Halfling Rogue. Yeah, that's better. I mean, we can go with that. All right, so here's how the audio works, by the way. That is recording both of us, that is recording both of us, and this is recording basically just me, but also getting some of the room audio. You are, are you recording right now? Yes, I'm recording right now. I've They're been all recording. recording right now? They're all recording right now. You can't even tell. Well, I guess do, I won't. Do you want them to top. make a noise? Well, no. But, <laughs> I mean, isn't that a thing? Like, you know how they always have a red light on the front of a camera? So you know on the front recording? of a camera, yeah. Because you do that with audio devices? No, it's not the same legality, basically. <laughs> okay. No. <laughs> no. Because uh, Kelly's character is a noble, I had her start with twenty-five, with uh, with start with one hundred gold, okay. but it's in platinum. Yeah, you told yeah. me that she can't spend <laughs> money anywhere. Everywhere she walks, you're like, you don't want that. You're like, what the hell? You Where's want your gold? To... Yeah, what the fuck do you want me to do with that? <laughs> Three more, and you can it's buy like, the you place. Walk into work with a hundred dollar bill, and I'm like, <laughs> you want me to break this? <laughs> I'd like one pair of socks, please. Here's a hundred dollars. I don't even like making change at work. All right, I uh, so you know this works. Why the fuck would I want to sil- make change at fucking a game? Ten silver pieces per gold, five gold yeah, per platinum. Yeah, well, a uh, hundred pennies for a dollar. It's it's all simple. It's just obnoxious. That's why it's obnoxious. Make sure that you take note of all of the things you purchase because at the end of the campaign year, we'll be doing campaign taxes. Oh sure. my fucking god. Thank you for all your receipts. How am I going to get an adventuring W2? Yep, yep, yep. And there's going to be some of, you know... <laughs> I-90 me- form for uh, the fact that I worked for that other county uh, too. Excuse me, point. excuse me. Ye old I-90 form. <laughs> and ye old tax man shall cometh. He's magic, of course. He's going to cast everlasting poverty on you. I'm going to sneak attack. Neck. Mm-mm. Sneak attacks don't work on him. Because <laughs> he's undead. Yep. <laughs> yeah, if there was an IRS agent, he'd definitely be a lich. EP. EP is Electrum. It's literally like this world's equivalent of a $2 bill. One piece of Electrum, I believe, is worth five silver. That's how it works. Yes, that is how it works. So. It's like the nickel. Oh, that's simple and I know, straightforward I know. to remember. Well, so think of it this way. One platinum, right, is worth five gold. Okay? One gold is worth five electrum. One electrum is worth five silver. And one silver is worth ten copper because fuck you, basically. I wish I had Do I mics. have low light vision? I don't believe as a halfling you do. Do people have that shit anymore? Yes, elves, anything? yes. No, elves definitely do have a little light vision. Yeah. Okay, so I don't. They yeah, took it you out. have nothing. They took it out. I, did they have it? Yeah, they had low light. Okay. Them and half elves. Huh. Uh-huh. Oh, there are no half elves in my world, by the way. Nor are there half orcs, because in my logic, why the fuck could they mate? They're not the same thing. Rape. No, no, I'm not. Like, That's they how can, all half orcs came about. They can have <laughs> sex, right? right? But they can't produce a child. Just like, just like a fox, and like something else could fuck, but they can't. I wish I could think of another thing here. Like a fox and a, like a weasel, I guess. 
Like it, it could happen, but they can't make a kid. Could? Yeah, because <laughs> there's a hole in a penis, you know? Yeah, you get a plus two to your dex. Fuck, I have to buy something like that. And that's, yeah. There's a light foot halfling thing here, but in my game, there's only one type of halfling. There's two types of elves, but only one type of halfling. You start in the city of Port Bliss. You have been part of this thieves gang, uh, which you can name whenever you want, by the way. But you've been part of this thieves gang. You don't of... let me name it? Yeah, sure. Why not? Okay. You've, you, you've been part of this thieves gang of halflings. Uh, Just halflings? Yeah. Yeah. This is it's like a racial thing. Well, yeah. You know, I mean, just like anything else, people tend to stick together. You know, it's not unusual for you guys to band together. Not to mention the the fact that you're effective thieves. You know, especially in cities. And you have found out through your various networks. You know, that there is a deal going down in the western slums. And it's uh, one of Baron Lafleur's men got their hands in a small wooden box. And you saw it sold, you gotta love that. And you saw it sold for a lot of gold, like a big pouch of gold was exchanged. Lafleur. It's the cop from Mallrats. Yes, no, it's, totally, it's totally the cop from Mallrats. Yeah. I keep saying this big yeah. puzzling guy. Yeah. Lafleur. <laughs> So, you found out that a deal is going down, a lot of gold was exchanged for this very, very small box, and that box ended up in one of Lafleur's warehouses, which, as far as you could see, was only guarded by a dude, maybe two dudes. And you're like, well, that's clearly worth stealing, so you brought it back to your people. And the guy, the head of your uh, crew, whose name is Basso Lightfoot, I just got in, just took it, got out, it was not even... No, you didn't take anything. You saw it, that it was taken there and then oh, you I went back to your right. people to tell them what you saw what right so Basso Lightfoot who is in charge of your crew just looks at you and he says what's no. Basso look like Basso is a slightly older halfling I mean you all are young but if you're the equivalent of 15 or 16 Basso is probably 20 so he's a little bit tougher a little bit more grizzled he's unshaven he's got a scar on his on his cheek he's got like pale gray eyes and kind of long shaggy dark brown hair you present this to him and he just looks at you and he says no 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 no, no. that box and that money belong to baron lafleur not you don't touch that don't go near his warehouses stay away from it you doro do you understand me stay away from it okay all right so then he goes back to Playing dice or cards or whatever you guys are doing in like your Wait, little uh, clubhouse. <laughs> and you leap and head to the warehouse? Yes! Okay. <laughs> all right. Now, excellent. when you said all I saw was two guards, uh. You're only there are for a you, couple minutes. Are you telling me this because I vetted the place? Or are you telling me this you, because I walked by, saw two people, and just was keep walking? You were outside the. You were outside his warehouse. It's a, and I'll explain in a second. But you, you were outside his warehouse. You watched a guy go in, and you watched and you saw that there was a guy standing outside, and the guy who went in didn't come out for the five so minutes you were standing there. It's not that there's only there. two guys there. It's I saw two people. You only saw two people. You can. You know there are. At least two people. Well, the first thing I have to do is. The first thing anyone would do is watch the place and figure out when guard shifts happen. Okay. When people change from their positions. And where are you going to watch this place from? So I'm go also, I'm going into this assuming it's just like any other job and I have infinite time. Assuming I haven't heard that whatever shipment is in there is moving soon. Give me a just straight up intelligence roll. Okay, this is what you know about Baron Henry Lafleur. He runs a series of outer Wait, wall storehouses. Just say what I rolled, will you? Well, you rolled a nineteen. You I didn't. Yeah, you have, you have an intelligence oh, bonus. Oh, that was an eighteen. I yeah. thought that was an eight. No, I was like, well, I no. guess I don't know. No, you rolled a fucking nineteen. You know some. You know Wait, some I I shit. Had, no, no, no. I have ten intelligence. It's eight. Oh, you rolled an eighteen. Then. Well, you still, still. Still, the yeah. point is, yeah. above fifteen, yeah. so probably. Okay, um, so you know that Baron Henry Lafleur runs a series of outer wall storehouses that transport and store a variety of legal and contraband items. He has ties to many of the, the richer houses in Port Bliss, as well as a network of fencers, ship captains, and smugglers that work along the free north. 
Shit. But you haven't know what it is yet. All you've seen is a box. Well, I just assume I'm gonna take this thing to some fence and right. sell it. But I don't depending care what it is or where it came from. Depending what it is. I guess. Right, because... Well, no, because in the world I've lived in, I guarantee I haven't like, found people or, like, no, look, sleeping look, gods or something like we're that. Talking about, no, it's no, all no, no, been, no, like, jewelry no, no. or expensive right. things. We're talking about a box this big, right? Right. Okay. So in this box, there could be a diamond. Rings, in this diamond, box, yeah, there could jewels, be a treaty. Gems, in tree? This bo- a treaty. Oh, in a this tree. box, there could be a could ring. Be a treaty, That's yeah. a noble's ring. There, there, there could be... Some sort of really, really expensive spice or salt. Yeah. It could be there. Could be a lot of things in that box, okay. and depending on what's in that box, would depend what kind of fence or where you brought it to. It'd be a wide variety of places you could sell that. That's what I mean. Okay. You don't know where you're going to take this yet. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's going to be cool during the game when <laughs> people are being idiots and honking and stuff. And- and, well, I remember these are going to be highly edited, so I'm going to cut a lot of shit out. Because otherwise, how fucking boring. Just sit here and just listen to us go on about nothing. So, likely I'm going to sell something that's stolen to the nation of Andi. Well, it depends. I mean, it depends what it is. If it is a... Right, well, if if it's it's straightforward. Let's say it's just gems. I lift some gems from someone. And if it's just some gem, you'll have an excellent chance of selling okay. it. Just if it's a royal this, signet no, ring. Obviously. I was just concerned because, like you said, there's a whole nation of people up here who yeah. kill people if they like are kind of magic so, yeah. or something. Well, you know what I mean? If it's a so magic. You probably don't want to try and like, sell magic shit to them, right? If it's, how you know would you I mean? know like, if it's magic? You kind of got to know who has what and where it should be to make money. You That's don't what it know. breaks down to. I don't know, but. All these questions you're asking are moot because you don't know what it is you're stealing. Right. So, until you know what it is, it doesn't matter. I assume it's valuable. Right. But that's all you know. All right, whatever. So. In fact, you can't even assume it's valuable. All you can assume is that Baron LaFleur wants it. Which makes it valuable. To him. It's, uh, for a guy that controls the entire fucking northern coast, that's pretty valuable. He doesn't control it. He works, he he has a network of people that work this coast, okay? The way you say it sounds like, he in cons- my, me and my world, it sounds like he controls the northern coast. These, these, <laughs> ship, these ship captains he's working with, he works with them. They don't work for him. Oh, he works with them. He's got, deals. he's got in town probably... Maybe a dozen men directly under his control. He's no small This fry. isn't the mafia, then. Well, this no, kind of. He owns those warehouses, right? So once the material's in the city, it's underneath his roof. So he has a, he definitely has a physical network in town. Once so you get he out... Does more work for these captains, then? He's definitely got a boss. You don't know who it is. So right now, you are here. Okay. And his warehouses are here. That where that warehouse is about thirty feet high. Building acro- the, these buildings next door are lower, about okay. t- about ten to fifth to fifteen feet high each, okay. and that's the front door. So I probably didn't see anything on the roof. That's fine. You don't see anything on the roof, but there is white smoke coming okay. out of the roof. Okay. It's just like a small plume, then cl- one clearly place? from a chimney. Yeah. Okay. Um, what is this? That is a, uh, a short staircase going to the front door, which is the only door. So it goes up the side of the building, and then the door leads in. Exactly. Where does the guy stand? The guy stands on that landing right in front of the door. So Facing? Just basically facing away from the door. How often does he move around that location? He doesn't move. However, every half hour... A guy. Half hour? Every half hour, a guy does a patrol. So a guy will come out. Oh, they don't switch places? No, he'll oh, just, okay. he'll they, just, he'll just come out. By. He'll talk to him for like five minutes and then he'll do a walk around the building. Do I hear anything they talk about? Uh, they literally just say, hey, hey, have you seen anything? Hey, no, I haven't seen any, anything. Good night, eh? Hey, hey. They, they we're playing cards talk. this week. Hey, we're going to play cards. I mean, basically, they talk about drinking and gambling. 30 minutes, he goes around. What are they armed with? Uh, they're both basically just, I mean, they're wearing leather armor, maybe, and they have short swords at their hips, and that's it. Okay. Where does patrol guy's patrol go? So he goes around the building, 
He goes all the way around once. Takes him about 15 minutes. He'll stop a couple times, maybe kick a brick or... Because there's a couple of, like, windows around it. All of them are boarded up. All right? There's iron bands across the front door. So that's clearly locked. And whenever the guy comes in and out, he's locking it whenever he goes in and out. How is he? He has a key. He has a key. And that's the guy that's patrolling that goes in and out? Correct. So he's not only patrolling outside, but he's going inside to patrol too? Well, you it can seems, assume so. Well, okay. When he comes back out, it's still him, right? It's always him. It's the same it's two always guys, the same over guys. And over. Yeah. Um, How long do you watch them? I'm going to do this for. What time is it? How. Nice it, is is pro- it? It, is a, it is approximately, let's say, 6 p.m. right now. So it's just starting to turn dark. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give him three t- iterations, and an iteration is when I notice that he's started the mm-hmm. pattern again. Okay. Um, I'm going to give him three iterations, and then take action. Okay. So <laughs> you watch this three times in a row, and three times in a row he goes in and out and comes around. Okay? okay. Now, at after the third time, okay, when he comes back out, Henry LaFleur is with him. All right. With the guy? There's yes. So three people are in, in the front of the Three door, people are now in the front of the door. And one of them is Henry fucking F- LaFleur. And one of them is Henry fucking LaFleur. Which means, since you saw him during the transaction earlier, he must have been inside this entire time. That's the only answer you have. Okay. Yeah, because you weren't gone that long. So he must have never left. Because he came here with the box. He came with the box yes. and then stayed up to this point. He must have. what you're saying. He must have. I mean, he possibly could have left and come back. Unless, you know, I am a thief, and it wouldn't be weird that there's a secret way in. That's possible as well. It is his warehouse, and he controls X amount of this. All these things are completely possible. He works with shady people. His office could be in there as well. It could be that simple. I mean, there could be a multitude of things. Perception. I want you to roll perception. Roll your perception. We're doing the rolls? For most things. But no, there's two types of perception rolls. There is your normal perception roll... And then there is your passive perception roll. Right. Now, I roll your passive ones. This one, though, you're actively looking, so you roll it. Why is that a dot? It's a class skill or something? It's a dot because it's, it's one of, you, get two, you get two types of skills. You get class skills that are known, and you get background skills that are known. That is one of your background skills. And all the dots are... All the dots are ones that you know, so they get your bonuses. Okay. So, in, in other words, every, everything that's got a dot... Right? It's one of my modifiers. Exactly. Okay. So no, then- it gets your proficiency added to your normal modifier. So, in other words, acrobatics. Where does proficiency bonus come from? Be just, just literally, what level are you? This goes up as your level goes up. Oh, that is it. It's a flat number. core number that gets added to everything. Fifteen. I'm not using that one anymore. <laughs> Like, you, you I got, can't read it. Okay, so 15. You got a 15. Okay, so this is what you hear. He turns to them, okay? And he says, we'll be back shortly. Make sure no one gets in. And he walks away. Just LaFleur. No, he takes the other guard with him. So only now the guy outside is left. Yeah, now I absolutely break into this place. You couldn't have said, come in anymore! The donor just walked out with one of the guards. Um, exactly what happened. Okay, so from here, I proceed to this side of the building, mm-hmm. get down. Climb check. Natural 20. So you basically wait. Do wait. wait. Yeah. 10 That's... and. Oh, oh, athletics? Just... Yeah, athletics? Yeah, exactly. So 13. Okay. So, you do a handstand on one hand and gently alight down onto a box and do a little backhand spring off of that onto the ground, which you land... Oh, wait, was this athletics or acrobatics? Because then it would have been 15. Oh, oh, and then when you do (laughs) land on the ground, you do a perfect little bow and then do another double handspring out into the the alley. Boing, boing, boing. And then I trip over a cat. (laughs) Um, Okay, so that worked just fine. Mm -hmm. We proceed to the back of this building here. Mm -hmm. We take my grappling hook. Okay. We aloft ourselves to the roof. Okay, roll. Uh, That is going to be a dexterity roll. So just give me a straight dex roll. 14. So you throw the grappling hook. 
it catches, you tug on it, it feels it feels sturdy. Okay. I climb the grappling hook. Alright. That goes incredibly well. Yes, okay. Plus right. is it athletics or acrobatics? Let's not climb. Let's take either. athletics. Athletics yes. would make it nineteen. Okay. So so that is a critical success. Yes. So one little tug, and it's perfectly. I'll, I'll let you just basically run it up like Batman, right? <laughs> so boom, 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 and then as you're at the uh, top, you push up and use the resistance of the rope to kind of do a little flip onto the roof. When you just do one tug, and the rope comes up in a perfect coil over your arm, and you tuck it back into your bag. This is all going to end so horribly. It's going very well so far, though. It's going impossibly well for things like, I walk over there. Yep. Uh, and then it'll be like, I fight for my life. No. One, two, it'll three. Be, it'll be the perfect uh, intro, though, because the audience would be like, wow, this guy's a master thief. And then you'll <laughs> fuck it up in about five minutes. Uh, okay, so. So you're on the roof. On the roof. Hey, so on the roof is basically. It's when I finally get up there and finish coiling, I literally quietly go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Excellent. Now, okay. look around. How do I get in from right. this roof? There is a flat roof and there is a single chimney. And the chimney is wide enough for, uh, for you. However, it is currently smoking. Okay. I go to the chimney. Okay. And I take my water skin. All right. Yeah. And I pour it down the chimney. All right. You're... Roll of perception. Yeah. I quickly go over to okay. the edge. All right. All right. To, because if he goes yeah. inside, that works too. Roll perception. I can do that too. <laughs> Roll perception. I was going to go down the chimney, but if you're going to go inside, I'll just use the fucking door. 16. Okay. He doesn't seem to notice anything, and you don't see any other activity, nor do you hear anything from where you are. Okay. Nuts. <laughs> I literally think that. It kind of wanted to just go inside. But the smoke has stopped. Okay, go back over to the chimney and proceed to climb down. Okay, I want you to roll climb. No. You want me to roll either athletics or yes, acrobatics? Yes, I want you to roll athletics, I'm sorry. Actually, no, acrobatics for this one, because okay. you're climbing straight down. Okay, Yeah. so plus five to this. Ten. Ten. Okay. It is. It's. It's. it's well, it's close. wet now because yeah. I ch- dumped yeah. water down. It's a little hinky, and you at one point do slide, but you catch yourself. Okay, and you and then you like, roll a perception. Eleven. I don't think anyone heard you. Okay, well, I proceed okay. down. All right. So you get proceed down. Down. All right. You, okay. You get all the way down, and then there's like basically a wide open iron drum and there's some sort of metal fencing here but a little bit it's, it's, it's a kind of a large area like a kiln almost okay a lot of ash in here okay uh, wet ash wet ash yeah so. uh, I proceed to try to open the kiln okay so I can get out of it okay. you are basically in a large open room Okay, with a stone pedestal in the middle of it. The floor has been painted with a giant red circle all the way around it. Okay, that almost touches all the edges. And the center column is in the middle of that circle. It's also been painted red. Okay? Okay. The pedestal rises about four feet from the floor on top. When you said there's a column in the center of the red circle, are you saying yeah. the column is like literally a pedestal type of thing? There's a there's four foot pedestal in the middle of the floor. And that floor is painted with a red circle. There is a floor like this. You came right. out right about here. Okay. There's a staircase going up here. Okay. There's a big red circle painted on the floor. And in the right. middle of that circle is a pedestal. That okay. helps. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Is the circle filled, or is it like a, a red It's painted. Type Basically, thing? there's a red circle painted on a stone so floor. So it was huge and had a marker and went like that. Well, yeah, basically. So yeah. it's not filled in. No, it's totally filled in. It's complete. Okay, so this so is so- solid red. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. And and the pedestal in it has not also like been someone moved. circled it. No. Okay. And also, Got the, it. the the pedestal has been painted the same red. Okay. So that's all solid red. Okay. On top of the pedestal is a massive, what looks like solid gold. Fist. Giant, shiny, there's torches along the wall, and it's just sparkling in the torch light. Off to the side, because like right, right along this area is a low kind of altar of this weird kind of yellow marble, right? Mm-hmm. And on this 
altar is a couple of folded garments, some candles, also the small wooden box. heard anything about this fist? Who who knows this fist is in here? No one. No, no one, one also, said anything about also, this fist being in here. This room is clearly ceremonial. This is there's this huge long altar at the front. There's these there's these robes, there's these candles. I wouldn't notice that. No, you would. The I'm not room a religious person. Yeah, but it's not but you but, but but you would look at it and be like, this is a storehouse and there's nothing in this room except for these things and it's weird that they're painted like like this and there's some kind of this feels strange. If that's the case then do I get the impression that this little area where the thing that I know I'm looking for is is a part of this type of setup? You have no idea. Like, because if you look at the pedestal and you look at the big red circle and you look at no. the golden fist, obviously those are connected well, you in should, a way well, do that I, would make them... What do you want to investigate first? How, how connected is this you have, cabinet you have to, of things You have to investigate. To, so what right. do you want to investigate first? That's what I'm saying. The cabinet, I guess. Okay, well, the, 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 I think it was like, a, like about like a 40-foot low marble altar basically okay okay and, and on top of the altar is, these is basically yeah some folded robes and and the robes are all crimson right with gold trim and they have that same fist symbol on them basically the same fist that's sitting on top of the pedestal okay and then the and the fingers are facing you where you're and standing i don't recognize this symbology at all or anything oh uh, roll give me an intelligence roll uh, no i'm sorry give me a religion roll Seven. Nope. <laughs> no, you do not. Right. Well, then, when I look at it, yeah. do I think, oh, just take it with me? No. Or is this like... No. No, wait. it's bigger than you. <laughs> it's, it, and it's like going up, and then you gotta put it on this cart. Okay, boys, get it. And then, you, know, it you know what I mean? <laughs> if it, it looks like a hill giant's a fist. It's as large as you are. Also, roll me a, just a straight intelligence. 12? Okay. No, mm -hmm. sorry. Uh, 14. It's, you would estimate roughly, It's if it's solid gold, it probably weighs at least 300 pounds. Okay, so it's too heavy. It's definitely too heavy to move. So that's However, not, that's, that's like also high enough to estimate the uh, cost of that. If it is 300 pounds, that's worth 15,000 gold. <laughs> that's what you're looking at right now. Uh, is there any part of this fist that is, for instance, adorned with valuable stonework okay, or so you walk, jewels you or walk anything around. that I could go and take my masterwork so dagger to your, and well, take something off of it as proof. You're facing it like this. Mm -hmm. You walk around the back of it. And as you walk around the back of it, you notice that there are four impressions, basically hollow areas of different shapes in the back of it. One of them contains a sapphire with three diamond and platinum points set into one of these, you assume three. there's a hole behind it. Yeah, so like, there's a sapphire with one, two, one, two, three points, so one, two, three. Oh, so it's almost like a triangle. Exactly, around the, around the center circular blue gem. So it's a star sapphire? It is, it, here, it looks like this. So there's like a cut gem in the middle of it, okay? And then there's three points of diamond marks around okay. it. And this top one looks like it probably had a chain at some point. And that's like embedded in the back of the fist. Yes. Or just resting on or whatever. It it's, appears it's to on be. On the back of the fist. Yeah. Um, and then there's th three other indications on the fist that all are All different sizes, all different shapes, and they're all empty. So basically it's, if you look at the back of a fist, it's empty, empty, filled, empty. Okay. Well, I go up to the fist. Mm -hmm. And I knock on it. See, okay. Because it's definitely if it's solid. hollow, then yeah. well, it maybe. is absolutely <laughs> solid gold. Okay, so tum, it's like, tum, 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 tum. yeah. Okay, can I get up on the pedestal? Yes, absolutely. Uh, uh, just roll me a climb check just to make sure. Ah, uh, roll, roll. Okay, all it's right. It's not climb. Okay. Stop saying climb. Right. right. Do you want acrobatics? Acrobatics, or? yes, I do. Okay, because that's seventeen on the second roll. Okay, so you just because you're because everything went so well so far, you hop right on up there and go to grab the top of the pedestal. But it is 
just, it doesn't have the texture you, you thought it was. It is smooth, polished, painted concrete. So you just slip and you go to try and grab to stabilize your, your, yourself and you grab the gem and it comes loose inside your hand. You fall and you crack your head on the ground, roll one die at six. Just kind of stunned for a second, but you're holding the gem and you sit up and you open your eyes and you're in a you're completely, in a, you're, you're in, in the, the same room, room, but everything's, but everything's kind, of kind of washed with like a light, light, like a light like purple, like everything kind of feels made of like energy. You are in a completely different place and you like the walls are the same and everything else, but it's almost like they're made of clouds. I start panicking a little. Okay, what do you do? <laughs> uh, well, I, I guess I, I would get up. Yeah, no, I go to the bottom of these stairs and I look up them and see if there's a door, if there. there's open space. Stairs lead to a door. Okay, so we go up to this door. Mm -hmm. And does it have a keyhole? Or? It's hard to tell. It looks like it has a keyhole. Okay. And possibly but everything a door is handle. like this weird foggy yes. blue. Yeah, whatever. absolutely. In 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 fact, now that you're actually at the door, you feel like you can just see through the door, and you lean forward, and you're just through the door. You're just I just in, went. I just traveled. Yeah, through it. you just went right through the door. Now you're in the I hallway like, past it, and I'm going through the door. Wolf, 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 wolf. It feels like weird, kind of like tingly, like as your hand passes through it, it feels like static. Okay. Right, but it passes through and comes back out. You came out of this door. All right. There is. Four more doors, all shut. From this door, from all the cracks around the edges, an impossibly bright light is emanating from all of the cracks of those doors. Not so bright that you can't look at it, but surprisingly bright, considering the fact that the door all is shut. All the doors? Just, just that, that door. door. Which one did I come out? You, you came out that one. So the one directly across from me. Correct. Doing that, and then the other. Do I notice that any of these doors are for lack of a better term, ghost-like? They, like, they, they all are through. like that. They all are like that, and they all look the same as the one you just walked well, through. We'll do that last, yeah. because... Uh, but come over here, mm -hmm. and... Well, or at least against this wall, and then, like, be looking into that room and do the marine thing where you, like, feed that room so you make sure no one sees you up to this point. Then you back up, go across the other hall, and then you do the same thing to the other one. So, yep. you know, both of those spaces, no one's going to see you. Then you cross one of the doors, and you finish looking through the, the other room. You know what I mean? Yep. Done and done. Okay, so in this room, mm -hmm. there are six chests lined up against the wall. In this one, there are shelves... And there are just piles and piles of silk bolts lined up all over the place. Thank okay. you. I found the warehouse. All right. Okay. And then glowing door, and then this. Okay. You look into this one, and this. Let me just double check to make This has got to lead to the front of the building where the door is somewhere. Okay, yes. So these, basically, it's a huge open room with two staircases going up. Okay. okay, that you're assuming are going up to the next level. Right. And just there's just shit stacked everywhere in here. There's boxes and crates oh, and lower areas. No, no. Yeah, this is like really random shit. And I cannot look through this door? No, you just haven't tried yet. Well, okay, so okay, so it's super, super, super bright and you squint and look and in this room is like there's like a, a cot and a little desk and a little table and a chair and, and like a rug and there is a boy. There's a kind of like a medium brown skinned boy, a little bit Arab, I guess to our, you know, eyes uh, with dark hair. He's got some bruises on his wrists and one on his face that have obviously are older, that have healed. And uh, there's a plate with some crumbs and, a, and a, like a tin cup. How's he dressed? Uh, he's dressed in like loose fitting garments. Uh, roll an intelligence roll. Uh, 19. He, he looks like a farmer from Wessel. From like the southern lands of, of Wessel. He looks like one of them. He's that. a boy? About 15, 16 years old, a teenager. Abused? And he's got bruises on his wrist and face that are old, that have healed maybe in the last week. And, sorry, that's one other point of this. He is wreathed in incredibly bright light. Flame seems to leak out of his eyes and mouth and ears. And a, like, if 
light could have form and shape like a cyclone. It is whirling about him and straight up to the a ceiling. He's sitting there calmly, but he's in, an, in, in the middle of a white hot inferno. Roll a will save. Oh, it's not will. Sorry, not will. Roll a wisdom save. Okay, so eight. Okay, you feel nauseous for a second, and you stumble, and you feel something fall out of your hand, and then you gasp, and you are in the basement, lying on the floor right next to the pedestal, and the gem has fallen out of your hand and rolled onto the a stone. That has got to be the most valuable thing in this place! So... I immediately destroy my water skin and put it in it. Right. And tie it up, does it? Nothing. <laughs> and I put that shit deep, deep, deep in my pockets. Excellent. <laughs> you are staying with me. Excellent. Now, okay, so I'm back in this room. There's yes. the golden fist, four empty yes. spots. Yes. And uh, robes and the thing I want. Correct. The thing I want. <laughs> so you go over to the wooden box. Now, it's, I investigate the box. It's open. It's open. The lid is oh, open, and it's, it's open. and it's empty. Give me an intelligence roll. Just a straight intelligence roll. Uh, wait. You said straight intelligence roll. Yeah. Does that mean I'm adding so my this just plus your intelligence, which is nothing. Okay. So, fifteen. It's fifteen. The sapphire is about the size of the box and inside the box is like a little kind of velvet impression and the sapphire oh. would have fit right inside that oh okay oh so this is the thing i was after Why was you can assume that? so you don't know he's gonna be super pissed when he finds out i took this because look at this he literally built a fucking room for this and his its friends wherever they are or whatever the fuck they do oh my god there's three more i wonder if he knows where they are I wonder who would know what this is. Okay, I now stop all this. Get out. Okay. Okay. Um. So I proceed to do what I did before, but this time I, for whatever reason, and if this gets me in trouble, let's play it. Right. Let's make it happen. Right. Uh, I'm just gonna assume everything was what it was when I was up here before. Okay. So as I come up here, there's okay. the door again. Yep. So, but obviously I can't go through this. So okay. now I check to see. Now we're back in the real world. Okay, does this have a keyhole? Does this Okay, it does. does it knob? Does it I try to jiggle a little? Does it open? Is it's there a not locked. It's not. It just kind of gives and it's okay and I'm noticing it and it's okay. So it's a door. So yeah. I go through the door and I close it. Again. Same hallway. Okay, right? Yeah. Door's not glowing. No. Two doors and a door there. Correct. Okay, so I go to that door. Okay. <laughs> the door with the chest? Yeah. It's locked. Oh, that's fine. Uh, so let's figure out how I'm going to pick this. Okay, good. <laughs> now let's say, how do we do lock picking? Give me that. Because it, it's really not about a skill as much as it is about owning and being able to use those tools. And because oh. you are a rogue, you can use those tools and now you own them. Okay. But if you didn't have them on you, you wouldn't be, be when you would not be able to do this. So, pick it. Right, exactly. Okay. So thieves tools. And you, and you also have, you can also use your bonus for your thieves tools, because again, because everything is the same. What just, is my... So, be, so be, because you are skilled in it, it's thieves tools, so you, you, you get your dex bonus, but because you're skilled in it, you also get your proficiency bonus, because it's always the same bonus. So okay, you so get it's plus, plus five. five. Exactly. Lock picking's not on the skill no. thing? No. Nope. I think they would just add those, whatever. Okay, so... Well, it's just... So it's plus five. Plus five. Okay. So ten. Okay. No, uh, you can't get that door open. Yeah. Okay, well, that's fine. And I'm not going to trade silk. I don't, couldn't get that out. Fair enough. All right, let's try this other door that led into the this door. The, that that was to the shelves with the two stairs that it's I assume are leading. It's open. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we... we... <laughs> and there's just a big open warehouse, uh, kind of dimly lit, and two, and two stairs going up to assume to the upper floor. All right, we proceed quietly up the staircase. Okay, was there anything else you wanted to look at down here, or are you done? Uh, if I look at some of these shelves and what I see is random sundries, then no. It's this is warehouse. Did you want to look, look to see if there's anything in oh, that room? Okay, yes, no, no, you're right, you're right. Uh, okay, so I check that room and I'm like, okay, that is, that's probably the way I'm gonna go yeah. out, but I really should find out more 
going on in there. So I go back and you notice that on the kinda... door is a little latch, like one of those little latches you could like look through. Oh, yeah. Well then, wait. How can I reach that? Well, you have to stand. <laughs> There's like a little step stool you could. There's drag a step stool. Yeah. Okay, so I kind of drag the. All right. And I bring the stool over and I get up on the stool. And then I check the ledge. You look in and, and there is that same boy sleeping on a, a, a cot inside that room. You can see barely in the light, see bruises on his wrists. And there's no window in that room, but that's the same boy. So based on the fact that this is a door, there's a latch, it's more than likely locked. And he's in there. Is there another way out of that room other than this door that no, I see? No, that's it. I'm to assume he's a prisoner then. It's me. It's, it's fair a locked guess. door. He's definitely locked in there. Right. Yeah. So I go. Psst. Psst. Okay, and he just kind of, just kind of like looks Psst. up. Over here. Over here. Okay, he walks over. Like, Who are you? And I put my finger in the latch. And I go. Hi. My name's Doro. What are you doing in there? Can you get me out of here? Out of where? Why are you in there? Can you unlock the door and get me out? Well, maybe. Let me see. And I climb back down, and I proceed to pick this lock. Okay. Maybe. Probably not. What was it, five? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Eleven? That's enough. So yes, you were were all your one-off last last time. (laughs) And the door swings open, and he kind of like looks around. I know, but well, who are you? Why are you in there? I don't know. They've had me in here every day. My brother and I were selling grain to the market, and I mean, and some men came up on our boat. They killed my brother, and they took me, and I've been here ever since. They don't know why. All right, well, I'm gonna get out, so if you wanna come with me. Yes! Maybe you ought to be real quiet and kinda let me tell you what to do. I don't know. I'm just gonna get out of here. Just get what you need. He doesn't have anything. He literally just has the clothes on. Oh, clothes. okay. I, I didn't know if there was stuff in there, and like no. slave trinkets. Like he had to go get the memorabilia his mother left him, or, or some shit. You know what I mean? Anything I'm just assuming you're the guy in Gladiator with your little toy anything, horse and shit. Anything he's had is clearly been taken from. He's just okay. got the clothes on. Then I don't say that. We just proceed to the staircase. He doesn't have any shoes. Oh, no. poor boy, poor no little shoes. boy, no shoes. Sorry, Tiny Tim. <laughs> okay, so we proceed to the staircase. Yes, and uh, I, I, and then <laughs> I quietly go up the staircase to investigate what's next. So these both end onto a landing, and then there's a wall here, and there's a large open area again with a bunch of boxes and shelves and a whole bunch of shit. But there's an opening? Yeah, there's basically a long wall and then it's just open on that end. Is that like it's a door frame and there's no door? No, just really, just literally, there's, I mean, yeah, it'd be a very, very, like, but 20 foot wide open area. The wall just stops and this is a 20 foot wide open area. Okay. Yeah. okay. Boxes and crates and barrels and lots of like dry goods and also a lot of alcohol, like a lot of barrels of whiskey and stuff like that. So a dry goods and alcohol. CBS. Sugars, flour, yeah, but, CPS. but not not like, not like standard things, not like big old bags of flour, like the more expensive okay. stuff, like sugar and salt and spices and things like that. Okay, so higher quality sundries, probably stuff that is and more stuff valuable, that, stuff that the traveler get here. Oh, not regional. It's exotic goods, almost. exactly. Even though it's sugar and stuff. <laughs> Just one can in make this sugar. world, it, it yeah. is exotic. Okay, no. anyway. So the only reason why America even exists is because they're trying to find a shorter this, route to get spices. All of, all of me going into there and me assuming that I'm just going to go with assumption knowledge on that room, but the rest of it I've kind of been like. So I, I know what's in his warehouse. Yeah, so fair enough. when times are tough and yeah. I need to sell a bag of sugar, yeah. I can get in here again and sell his sugar. That's true. Fair um, enough. So because Ron would probably go for more money or whatever, you know, but. You know, mental inventory. Yeah. So I get up here uh, and kind of, we're gonna see what's in there. So there's a long counter that runs the length of this wall and there's a, like a little a flip thing here. This is just like, you know, some, like a bench and, you know, and then a door here. There's a log book here and some other shit. Okay, you know? and like, is there, 
need to do that road. Right? No. Is there a register? There's no register. <laughs> There's no register. So, where do we keep the money up here? Uh, <laughs> roll uh, an investigation. Is that one? Yeah. Yes, it is. Zero. Three. You it's me, see. don't care. Yeah, okay, you, so what? tell me about this door. Uh, it's an iron banded door, okay. and there's a handle on the inside. Oh, but I have to get him out. Fuck! I forgot I had an NPC! Yeah. God damn it! Yeah, escort mission. God damn it! Escort quest. Oh, shit! I was totally just gonna <laughs> knock on the door, and the guy'd be like, what? <laughs> and open the door, and I'd be like, hi! And run under his legs. Be excellent. Be excellent. Ah, but the um, fifteen-year-old boy that you leave behind crap. bruises on his wrist and the dead brother would be very sad. Actually, that is still the best plan. Okay, so how are we getting out of here? Oh, he came up. Yeah, he, he, I was going to go back down. No, no, no. He kind of came okay. up behind you. Okay, here's what you're going to do. I'm going to get this guy's attention yeah. and run off with him. You're going to count to about. 25, 30, and then you're going to go out the door another way, basically. And then you can get away. Oh, well, I'm, where, where are you going? I don't know where I am. Well, I've got to lose the guy, so I'll probably end up losing you too. But I don't, I don't even know what, I don't know where I am. Well, I mean, if you want, I can take you back down to the cell. I don't know. But Sorry, I... buddy, but you don't really look like Thieves Guild material to me. And I wasn't really coming here to save slaves. What city are we in? Where? Oh, this is Port Bliss. Haven't you been here before? Can you at least slave me down to the docks? Well, depends on how fast you can run. I can run very fast. Just don't leave me here, please. Well, I guess... If you can keep up... I can keep up. What's right. the plan? Follow me! All right. <laughs> and I go over to the door... And I... Dun, 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 dun. Right. It's like... <laughs> Oi! John! Hey, John! And he's just kind of looking, like, around in the room, but he does not see you. He doesn't see me? No, he just is kind of looking around in the room, and then, boom, he looks down, and he's like, What the hell are you doing here? What the hell are you doing out there? He's like, Come here, yo! And he goes to grab me, he's like, Oh, okay. <laughs> Just you. Right, goes to grab you. What do you do? I run under his legs. Okay, I want you to roll me a dexterity saving throw first. Seven. Okay, he fortunately rolled less. So he just misses you as you run between his legs. He's like, oi! And he starts running after you. Okay, and you kind of okay. look back as you do, and the kid juts out. And he's coming up behind you. So where okay. do you run? Okay. So from this, the the where docks we are, are down wait, over we here. Need a map again. And the docks are here, or here. There's two different docks. There's I'm making on assumptions yeah. on all of this. Yes. Yeah, so I, I I say he has no money. Whatever. Yeah. So I don't want to stash him on a ship. Probably five. Probably five. right because one you need a ticket. I bet. Probably five. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I mean, these are these are gonna be larger cargo ships. Yeah. And things so, like that. No. So five. These are gonna That's be. That's where we're headed. Well, these are gonna be that direction. Those are gonna be like grain barges. That's so fine. So harder to hide them, but easier to get on. Probably get passage is the point. Maybe. Maybe. Um, but that's where you're. That's where you're headed. Yeah. Okay. So what? Wait, so so dude, this guy's running after you. What do you do? Well, I make sure he keeps chasing me. Okay. Right. Right. And we start heading over that way. Okay. Okay. So as you are running, okay, right. roll me a perception bro. I just... You'll get used to it. Don't worry. Seven. Okay. You come to a skidding halt because Baron LaFleur is standing right there. Next to Baron LaFleur is some other guy. You haven't seen him before. He's got like long white hair and like weird kind of yellow eyes and he looks right at you and he extends his hand. I want you to roll your constitution save. I'm oh, sorry, Will, Will, uh, roll your wisdom save. Uh, 15. He, he is 30 feet away from you. You feel his hands on your throat. 
clawed them for a second, and you stumble backwards, and they just slide off your throat. Then you see the kid come around the corner, and Baron sees him too, and he's like, that's the kid. I look at the kid and go, other way! <laughs> like that, and whip out my cold drops, and <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> you get to the kid, and who's still kind of stunned, but you grab his arm and turn him as you start, yep. r- as, as you start running. I need another will save. Uh, 15 again. Not this time, though. You feel your whole body just kind of lock up, and you two are just slammed together. Some force is now holding you guys two together. Your arms and wrists are turning in unnatural ways as if someone is bending them up against your body. You kind of are able to turn your head just a little bit, and you see the guy kind of coming towards you with his hand open. And you can hear him in your head. Mm-hmm. He's only whispering, but you can definitely hear him. What what we have here. So you've met the first of our four players. With each of these preceding podcasts, I'll be introducing another one of our players. We have four in total. And then after that, we will start with the first real campaign podcast with everyone together. I hope you uh, have enjoyed this first kind of test run at what a live session would sound like. If you've got any uh, questions or comments or you want to learn more about the God's Fall world, go to godsfall.com. There's a lot more information on the website, including maps that you can zoom into and get a really good look at where we've been. I'm also going to be putting notes up on the website for each of the players, and we'll have a continuous dialogue there that I think some of you might find interesting. So if you have any questions or comments, go to the website, send us an email. We'd be happy to hear from you.